Hello and welcome back to video 4 for topic 2 computer organization. Here we're going to be explaining the machine instruction cycle or the fetch execute cycle and this is for the IB diploma in computer science. As you can see still on topic 2 out of the 4 core units. Uh, but we're at the final video for computer architecture. We've then got to do secondary memory, operating systems, binary and simple logic gates. Okay, so we'll get started. Okay, so our objective is to explain the steps involved in the fetch, decode, and execute cycle. We're also going to describe the role of the data bus and the address bus in the machine instruction cycle. So let's get started. What is the fetch, decode, execute cycle? You may have heard of this term. Well, the fetch, decode, execute cycle is basically how the computer processes instructions over and over again to perform tasks. So first of all, it's going to fetch. The CPU goes to the computer's memory, i.e. the RAM, to grab instructions that need to be processed. It stores this instruction in a temporary space called a register. It then needs to decode this instruction and find out what it needs to do with it. The CPU translates the instruction into a set of signals that tells the computer which action to take. And finally, we move on to execute. Now that the instruction is understood, the CPU carries out the command. This could be doing a calculation, moving data, or sending information to a device like a screen. Okay, this cycle happens millions of times per second, allowing the computer to run programs and perform tasks over and over again. Okay, we'll start with some high level language. So I've got a single line of code here, area equals length times width. Okay, an example of Python code. So step one, the computer needs to load in the value of the variable length into the immediate access store, into one of the registers. Okay, next, it needs to load in the value for the variable width. Okay. And then step three, it needs to multiply the two numbers together. And then finally, it needs to store the result in the variable area, which will be in another address in memory. Okay, to put that into a better perspective, I'm going to take those commands and turn them into what I call an assembly language. Okay, so we've got load, and we're going to load from memory to the CPU, um, whatever is being placed in memory address 20. Then we're then going to multiply it by the value that's been stored in memory address 21. Once we've multiplied both values together in position 20 and in position 21, then we're going to store the result, the answer, in position 22. Okay, so we've got three little instructions there. Now we can give these values. Obviously, being a computer, it only talks in zeros and ones, so it would be a binary register we'd be using. But we can also give it an hexadecimal value, as you can see here. So first instruction one, second instruction two, and then at position 10, I've got the store value. So I've expanded this a little bit further, and I've created an instruction set with nine different commands, nine different instructions. Okay, um, instruction one at hexadecimal position one, or binary position zero, 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 one, is load x. So the first position, load x. So it's going to load the contents of x into the accumulator which we'll come on to in a moment. It's going to store the contents of the accumulator address x. It's going to add the contents of x into the accumulator. It's going to subtract the contents of x from the, from the accumulator. Input, input value from the keyboard into the accumulator. Output, output the value in the accumulator to the display. Terminate stop, which would terminate the program. Stop or halt would terminate the program. Um, skip condition which skips the next instruction. And then we've got jump X, which loads the value of X into the program counter. And of course, a computer will be loading binary values, binary data into binary, in and out of binary registers. Okay, so let's have a little look at this with inside the CPU. So I've got the CPU here containing the control unit, the accumulator, the arithmetic logic unit. These are the same color because it's basically the same thing. Okay, these work in tangent with each other. They're all part of the ALU. Okay, we've got the program counter, PC. We've got the current instruction register, the CIR. We've got the memory address register, the MAR. And we've got the memory data register, the MDR. What we've got on this side is the RAM. And I've got all the, all the addresses, and this goes on millions and millions of numbers. Yeah, the addresses and the data which lives at those particular addresses those particular numbers. Now, I'm keeping this sort of in assembly language here, okay, an actual denary numbers, but what you must bear in mind is um, we've tweaked this a bit because it would be zeros and ones, zeros and ones, because it would all be in binary, okay? So the first task, into the program counter, we're going to load in 
the memory address 100. That's where we're going to start. At the program counter, we're going to start at the position 100. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to load that memory address, because it is a memory address look, into the memory address register. Okay. So from there, we're then going to load in the data, which is at the memory address 100, load 20. Okay. 20 refers to the values up here. Okay. Now this is the current instruction register. So we're going to load 20 into that current instruction. Okay. Then even before we've done any calculations on this, we're going to get ready. We're going to prepare the CPU for the next task. Okay. So we're going to place the next task, the next um, address here into the program counter. We then from the current instruction register, we're going to load 20. Okay into the CU, into the control unit. So the control unit knows what we're going to be working with. And then from there, we've loaded 20. So we've loaded 20, the value 20, into the memory address register. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to load the data from memory address register 20, basically the data 5, into the data register. Okay. Hopefully you've been following that. Okay. So we're using all the registers and we're using the control unit, but we've not started using the accumulator yet or the arithmetic logic unit yet. Because all we've done is load whatever value is a position 20, i.e. 5, into the memory data register. So that then gets put into the, because it's a number, it gets put into the accumulator because we're obviously going to be doing a calculation on it. And that's the first instruction completed. So 101, the next instruction, goes into the memory address register. Okay, what happens next? We're going to add 21, the data that's in the address 101, the data, yeah, add 21 goes into the memory data register. Where do you think it goes next? It must go into the current instruction register because it's a current instruction. Okay, before anything else happens, we update the program counter, getting ready for the next instruction. Okay, so we're back here and we're going to take whatever's in the CIR and we're going to load it into the control unit. So we're going to be adding 21. So the control unit now needs to send a signal, basically saying we need to be using the ALU to do some addition. And that's all the CPU is, a great big sort of adding machine. A great big sort of adding machine. So from there, we've told it we're going to be adding something, but what we're going to be adding, we're going to load the five from the accumulator into the arithmetic logic unit, ready for doing some calculations. So we're going to load whatever's at memory address register 21, so we're going to load in the value 8, which is the data at the address 21, into the memory data register. That goes directly into the accumulator, okay, ready to be worked on between this and the arithmetic logic unit. So we do the addition because we've sent an add signal to the arithmetic logic unit. We do the addition and we get 13, okay? We get 13. So we've done the calculation. So the 13 gets put back into the accumulator. Why? Because the accumulator works as sort of a totaler. It keeps track of all the numbers we've been put in. The accumulation, the total figure, the total value that we've accumulated with all the sort of adding and subtracting we might have done along the way. Okay, that's the secondary instruction completed. So finally, looking at memory address 102, which we put into the program counter earlier, we're going to move that into the memory address register 102. Or what's this about? We need to store at position 22, which is here, the value that we've put inside, which is currently in the accumulator. Okay, so we're going to store a position to, at um, position 22, current instruction, store 22. That's got to go. This is getting ready for um, this is getting ready for the next instruction. We could have put a stop in there or a halt to sort of close the program. I've not done just to sort of speed things up a little bit. So the CIR loads in store 22 into the control unit. From there, we're going to go back. The control unit sends the, sends the message, okay, memory address register 22. Here we go. 13 gets put back into, into the memory data register. 13 from the accumulator goes back into the MDR. And then that data is put into the position store 22. So 13, these two numbers added together, 13 goes into position 22, store 22. Okay, and that is it. That is the end of our program. We've done a simple addition between two values, 
okay, five and eight, add them together and put them back into the memory. Okay, we can then go file save on the computer and we could save that value onto the hard disk, onto the SSD, if we wanted to. So that's a very, very, very simple program. So trying to demonstrate how the CPU talks to the RAM in terms of the fetch, decode, execute cycle. So in summary, the fetch, decode, execute cycle involves fetching, decoding, and executing instructions. The address bus carries memory addresses while the data bus transfers the actual data. Okay, and as always, this time I've only got one question. If you can sort of mirror what we've just done then, so you can describe the role of the fetch, decode, execute cycle, and how the data bus and address bus are used within it for six marks, that would be fabulous. If you want to pause the video, have a little go, draw a diagram, just to get used to how it works. Otherwise, I'm going to show you what I've put down as the answer. So here we go. The fetch decode execute cycle is a process by which a CPU retrieves an instruction from memory, i.e. fetches it, translates it into a command it can understand, so it decodes it, and then carries out the operation, okay, the execute. The address bus is used during the fetch stage to send the memory address of the required instruction from the CPU to the RAM. The data bus is then used to transfer the actual data of instructions between the RAM and the CPU during both the fetch and the execute stages. Okay, I think that should get me six marks. Okay, three sort of points explained there. That is it for this video. So thank you very much indeed, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.